you can see it munched it and it did that on low. So I'm, I'm actually rather impressed. Well, what do we have here? Well, we're gonna find out. I'm not exactly sure. So I was contacted by a company out of China and they sent me a vacuum free of charge. Said do a review on it. So we're doing that. I'm gonna unbox it and take a look. Well, that's what it is in Chinese. It's a BWAR182. And I really wish these Chinese people, you know, if 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 you're see my videos and you're in China, my wife's Chinese. You're welcome to hit me up on WeChat. Uh or give me your WeChat and I'll add you. That way we can communicate maybe a little bit better. So let's see what's inside this box. And I'll put a link this in below to get my knife. Nice, they double boxed it. Oh, okay. Got a That's just a shipping label. Got a nice model number there. Uh, no picture on the box. For those who care. And the QR code is on the box, and QR codes are everywhere in China, so that's something you don't see too often. All right. First thing is, I'm greeted with an interchangeable battery the battery check level but there's no nothing and we're gonna see uh, got less milliamp hours than my cell phone it's got a user manual we got oh, we got a crevice tool what, it does kind of look like the Dyson yeah, thing. It's very, very Dysonic as I like to say. Dysonic yeah well, that's very Hoover Sonic, though, that wand. Yes, it is. And we have a nice little... hoover Little with QR codes. It's nice, all right. Let's see what's... This looks like a wall mount plate. Oh, this machine! Ah, oh, yeah. It is a Hoover! If it's got the switch... Oh, no, it doesn't have the switch here. I don't know what this is. It's its own thing. I think I saw a vacuum like this while I was in China. So yeah, I think you did. I think I think I did see that in in, in some of the in some of the footage. We've got yeah. a tool mount, a small nothing, and a dedicated dusting brush that rotates. All right, that's better than we thought we'd get. Oh yeah. And here is oh well. It will work on 100 volts and 60 hertz, but I'll need to get a prong adapter for that. All right, so they only give you the one battery. And the battery just slides. Oh, okay. The battery rocks in, kind of like a kind of like an AK mag. Oh, got some charge out of the box. Not much power. There it goes. Oh, the it stays on by itself. Okay, we'll have to test that. All right, that's so. If Dyson would do this, click on, click off. That's so much better than having to hold the trigger. You gotta. Bin release, maybe? Oh, okay. Yeah. So the whole, wow, okay, that's cool. So the whole bin comes off, and we have a small washable, wow. Okay, small, this, and this looks like a Hoover Wind Tunnel T-Series miniaturized. Nothing wrong with that. We have a, that's an interesting choice of filters. Gives more filter surface area. Yeah, and then we have a screen here, and the screen, doesn't look like it comes out easily. We got a flapper there. This is quite interesting. This is a uh, really interesting. So that just it's kind of awkward to put on because the clip is on the side. You're not doing it actually straight. Kind of so messes with your. Are like that too. Yeah. Okay. 
So just how powerful is this hand vac? Well, we're going to test that. I've fitted our working uh, vacuum gauge to it. So we're going to turn it on. I'm going to test it on high. So on a sealed unit, not very good. So it gets almost unmeasurable uh, in terms of its lack of power uh, on the working vacuum gauge. So it's time to do the bare floor test on this machine and I have no idea how it's going to do but I, I know it's not particularly powerful. So let's take a look and see how it does on our bare floor test. Now if you're not familiar with our bare floor test, what we have here is pet hair breakfast cereal, flour, and then some cat litter. So we're actually only going to do about half of this with this poor little vacuum. So let's see how it... seem to scatter anything. There's a bit of the flowers kind of stuck into it. Uh, but you know, I think if we were munching pet hair with this, I've got some pet hair stuck in the fluffy brush roller too, it looks like. Um, you know this might be alright for quick pickups. Definitely not a replacement as your only vacuum. But that definitely did better than expected. Um, so I'm kind of pleasantly surprised by that. Let's just munch some more pet hair real quick. Get just a line of pet hair. Let's just see how that does. So that was on low. And you can see it munched it and it did that on low, so I'm, I'm actually rather impressed. It does seem to tangle a bit. I'm actually kind of impressed by that uh, for being such a uh, small, low end uh, machine. So let's see how it does on the high setting. Well, that's what we got in there. A little bit of hair wrapped around there, that's to be expected. So, there's cat litter scattered and hair stuck in the rug. So I think it ground as much in. Yeah, there's a little bit of flour there too. So it looks like it ground as much in in the carpet as it did it picked up. So we're going to say I wouldn't recommend this for carpet. So something I really like about this versus the Dyson is you just touch the trigger on, you touch it off. And then your speed is there, and that's kind of annoying because you always kind of want to put it on high. But it does get under things very nicely. It's a bit loud, but it's not Dyson V11 loud or V10 loud. It seems to be quieter. And you do have a nice battery indicator right there as well. Then to turn it off, just do that. And one thing, now this is an improvement over any of the Dyson products lately. There's a, there's a quick battery release, which means you could change the battery. Now, as I was doing that, you can see the little rubber pad fell off. And, you know, 
I don't think that should fall off with the little testing I've done. You can see how much I've used it. I haven't even filled the bin. So quality would definitely be a concern. And then there's parts. Um, you know, parts aren't really available much past, you know, what you see on Alibaba for it. Now this doesn't seem to really stand up anytime I try to put it. It's always kind of awkward to stand up as you can see. So that's something I'm not too thrilled with, but it does come with a wall mount. So I'm okay with that, you know, if you want to wall mount it, but it, it is kind of a hassle to try to wall mount something as well. Let's talk about emptying this thing because inevitably you're going to fill it up and you're going to need to empty it. And the, the thing about that is you have to take this off each time. Okay, and then, you know, find some place for that. But then it gets a little awkward. You have this release, and this release is like not marked, so you have to do that. All right, now you can charge this and set this part aside. So now we can go outside and empty just the bin. I would never do this inside in my kitchen. I'm not going to get that dust anywhere, so we're going to go in the trash can away. Um, so let's go outside and empty this. All right, well, I'm outside where we can safely empty this, and there's not like a button or anything on this. There's just like a tab. So, and then there's no way to remove the screen view, so you're going to have to reach your hand in there and touch all the dirty stuff. So I really not a huge fan of that. And then there seems to be no HEPA filter. There just seems to be this foam filter and this other foam filter, which has hair and stuff in it. So, I, perceivably, it is going to be kind of dirty to, to empty and maintain. And there is like a, a valve in here, but it's not spring-loaded. It's just friction. Uh, or gravity might be a better word. Uh, I, I really um, not a fan of these plastic canisters. So, I, this would be entirely better if they had done something like the Orc Pod or something like that. Well, we're done vacuuming, so we want to charge this. And they made it so you don't even have to, you can charge just the battery by itself. You don't even have to charge it in there. So, some forethought. But, <laughs> they sent me the wrong plug. Now, they're trying to market this to the U.S. and they sent this plug. And this plug doesn't fit in our outlets. And I'll explain to you why that is. So we're at my wife's karaoke machine here. And that's something super popular in China. But what also is different in China, and this is something I don't think any American would be able to probably understand, unless you've seen it, is this is one of two types of plugs you're going to see in China. In fact, when I was in Shanghai, and you can go to our Patreon and check out some of those videos if you're interested, um, they don't really have a standard plug over there because they make everything. They have 220 at 50 hertz, but they have 10 different types of plugs. So you'll see something like this that's actually a universal plug. So you'll see that I have my American plug plugged in here. That plugs in just fine. You'll also see the European style plugs plug in there just fine. So what I'm going to have to do with this in order to charge it is plug it into my Chinese power strip that I have. Now I'm just going to take a wild guess that most Americans don't have a Chinese power strip, nor do they have a Chinese karaoke machine. So unless you're doing those two things, you're probably going to need to buy yourself a prong adapter of some sort. Now, this is rated to, to our voltage as well. It's dual voltage. But it's just something to keep in mind with this. Now, that it's charging, I will show you what it looks like here. And you can see that it's just going to flash its lights. Now, thanks for watching our video on our mystery vacuum here. I do worry about getting parts and supplies and stuff for this vacuum. I guess the price is about right for what you'd expect, uh, but I still, I still think there are other options out there I'd rather spend my money on. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and check out some of our other videos here.